Hi friends, welcome back to Art Tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series and in today's episode our focus is to learn how to execute end-to-end -end tests. End-to-end -end test means right from automating your script of your application from login to logout screen where it will achieve an end-to-end -end functionality. We'll learn all about it, how to test end-to-end -end in Angular in this episode. Welcome back friends, my name is Sridhar. I bring over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer and I bring knowledge on modern web technology stack. I have a passion to share my knowledge with you all, also to learn from you all. So during the course of this tutorial series, if you have any doubts, any queries, any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. I'm putting in a lot of hard work in bringing these tutorials for you. So please support me, please encourage me by subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. Thank you in advance. This is part of the Angular 9 full tutorial playlist. We have around 70 tutorials with detailed explanation and code examples. If you really want to learn and master Angular 9, this is your playlist. The link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. Continuing with our Angular series that we are focusing now is on testing and in the past few episodes we have learned about the basics of Angular testing. We have learned about some fundamentals and in the last episode we learned about how to execute unit tests, what are unit tests, how do we use them, how do we run them. Today we are focusing on end-to-end -end tests. Alright, so I'm bringing out a new course on advanced angular testing very soon where you will learn how to write it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. Alright, so let's bring back the focus to this episode which is running how to run end-to-end -end tests in Angular. So end-to-end -end test means automating the application's workflow for a functionality end-to-end. -end. At the beginning, I gave you an example which, which said we can be from login to logout, whatever you do, you will have multiple functionalities. Taking care of one of such functionality will be your an, a good use case for end-to-end -end testing. Right? So let me give you an example. So when you log in and you go navigate to dashboard, from there you go to contacts, then you create a contact, you view a contact, you edit a contact, and you log out. This entire flow is a good use case for an end-to-end -end test script, right? From login to log out, you're automating the entire functionality. This is one of the example of end-to-end -end test. Angular has a beautiful support for testing end-to-end -end use cases. Angular uses Protractor, which is written on top of Selenium WebDriver for executing the end-to-end -end scripts. We can also, so the protractor comes with a lot of default uh, mechanisms which we can obviously customize and use uh, depending upon the kind of use cases we are looking at. Today we will learn few of them, but it's up to us to configure the test execution environment the way we want it. So, so to run end-to-end -end test in Angular, we need to run a command on Angular CLI which is ng-e2e. When we run this command, it will execute the end-to-end -end tests. Let's get started. And in, like, like I do it in all episodes, I'll make some technical notes for you, for your reference. Make sure you understand, make sure you follow it. Ask me if you have any questions on it. All right. So let's make some notes on Angular testing end-to-end. -end. All right. Very good. So now the first thing we should know, end-to-end um, -end test cover an entire functional flow of the application. Okay, that's the first thing that we should know, right? All of our end-to-end -end test scripts are kept or slash I would say are located inside the folder slash e to e. So here you can see 
here you will see according to source wherever you have the source at the same level on the same root level you have a folder called e2e right so this is very very important this is where you will keep all your end-to-end -end scripts all the end-to-end -end scripts will have the file names ending with dot e to e hyphen spec dot ts so if you see this is an example right for example app dot e to e hyphen spec dot ts right if you remember we also saw it in last episode that all unit tests will have the ending the files ending with dot spec dot ts right so that was for unit test and for end to end it is e to e for e to e it is dot e to e hyphen spec hyphen test ts right so the next question we learned that angular has built-in native support native support with for end-to-end -end tests using protractor okay so now that we have pro we have we know that angular uses protractor for end-to-end -end testing what we can we can find the configuration find the config file inside the e2e folder okay so we have the e2e folder inside that we have protractor.conf. protractor.conf.ts file this is where this is where all the defaults are mentioned for e2e all right now we can customize these options right we can customize these options based on our requirements remember to run and to and test we will run the command ng e2e that's the command we will run let's run it now ng e2e and remember like i told you protractor protractor is built on top of web driver right protractor is built on type on type top of web drive web driver so if you see here you would see this line which will say it is taking the chrome driver right uh, by default by default protractor uses chrome driver uses chrome along which will download the chrome driver if it's not present already okay so if you see our protractor has run the our protractor has run the report and it says that it's failing right so this is the this is the this is the message we, we will get it will say that we have got it and it is saying that executed one of one and one failed right so these are the failures that it is listing so protractor will can also open the window let me show you that now all right so it will open up now all right so let it build and then it will come out and once the build is done it will open up the browser let me not do anything so that it opens up all right so now it's opening the browser so it opened it will execute it will close it all right and it will give me this message which says executed one out of one and it failed so it will the protractor will give the execution report of 
total executed total failed and passed right so this is the report we get once we execute right so don't worry about the failing things now we'll fix them again come we'll come back and fix them later the idea here is to understand how to customize and what all we can do with that now I told you we can customize the options right so let's go to protractor.conf.js and you can see that by default the browser name here is Chrome right so we can customize this instead of Chrome we can say it's Firefox right so you can change uh, we can change the browser that we want to execute we can change the browser uh, we want to we can change the browser we want to um, give preference or execution wherever you want whichever browser you want execution you can change it in protractor tractor.conf.ts file right you can change it here under browsers you can change it to firefox ie etc you can also change the base URL if you want for that. Also, we can change the colors like the default timeout, etc. We can also change all script timeout that you want to configure. So basically, you can configure anything that you want here, right? And I will I have changed it to Firefox. I will execute, it will fail. I know it will fail in my machine because my Firefox driver is not there. But if you see, if you have Chrome or Firefox, if it's up to date, you should not see any error, right? So I will revert it back to Chrome. Let's see it here. All right. So now you can also alternatively mention the port number here that you want to run. If you don't, by default, by default, the port number, it looks, it looks is... 4200 we can change it by passing the parameter as hyphen hyphen port in command line like this so now if I say 4300 this is also good now it will listen and execute at 4300 so if you are running your application 4200 will be busy so that's why I'm running now at 4300, which is also totally fine. We can also mention different configurations that it can take, right? So all this can be overridden. We can also override the base href that we want, right? So we can again pass a parameter. So now you see it will see here. Now it says it's listening on localhost 4300 here, right? So this way we are configuring our local host 4300. Similarly, we can also configure our base href URL, which is required again, very important. You can change that also in your protractor or through command prompt, right? So you can pass something like base href equal to and new URL that you want to pass, right? So these are some of the options that you can use and pass for end-to-end -end testing. Once you have done it, you can see that report. We can also generate the code coverage report. Generate the code coverage report as well for E2E tests. This we will see it in the next episode when I cover code coverage. All right, so that being said, friends, uh, we have covered most of these, like these are some of the commonly used options. We have seen few like browser, base URL, port, etc. that you want to configure, protractor config file if you want to pass some different configuration file, etc. In the next episode, I will teach you how to skip some test. For example, when you are working on a large application, there would be some test which will be failing obviously what in, in, in when you are less of time when you don't have enough time you uh, one of the way is to quickly skip the test so that at least the pipeline passes right so we'll learn all about it in the next episode if you like this video give a thumbs up i'll see you in the next episode i hope you are enjoying learning as much as i enjoy teaching you thank you so much see you in the next episode